So for, um, for microscope, uh, we need to understand the magnification and resolving power. Magnification is the ability to enlarge the object. Um, to magnify means to make it double, triple, 10 times, 50 times, whatever. This is called magnification and resolving power is the ability to show the details, resolution basically. A good resolution means you can see better details. Um, so magnification uh, is the extent of enlargement again and it's just an interaction of uh, the light waves of different lenses. The, the, the light wave go to the curvature of a lens and then go to curvature of another lens so it will be magnified at the end. These are the different parts of the microscope that we have to know and as you see this here is called the ocular lens. It's one of the two lenses that we need to know. Um, this is called the nose. Uh, resolving nose piece it looks like a nose so you can you can rotate it around to use one of the objective lenses we can have three or four objective lenses uh, you can use any one of these and, and on on every one of those it's it's mentioning uh, the magnification power like this is 100 this is 40 this is um, whatever the number is so each one of these objective lengths uh, lenses will have a magnifying power. And then, uh, this is the slide that you will be using for, the, for this type of microscope. This is the optic one, or the light microscope. Uh, this part here is the adjustment. The big one here is the uh, coarse, and this is the fine one. So you do the coarse first, until you get the, uh, the slide um, uh, close enough, you start it to see a little bit, and then you do the fine adjustment so you can see what uh, the details. And then you will have uh, an iris or diaphragm. And this diaphragm is basically controlling how much light is going to pass through and go to the specimen on that slide. Um, there is a light source here. This is the base at the bottom here. This is the base. And on the base, you have a light source uh, from which you have um, uh, the housing filter. So it starts like this. From the bottom, this is a base. This is a light source. The light source will go through this um, housing filter, the lamp housing filter, that will go through a diaphragm. The light will hit uh, through this condenser and it will hit the, the, uh, the, the object, whatever you're looking at, a specimen, whatever it is. And then it will go to the objective lens. It will be magnified. You can choose one of these four and then it go at the end to uh, the, the head which is uh, the binocular head on which you have these ocular lenses that will do the other part of the magnification. Uh, so this, these are the different parts that we need to know. And we, we, are, we talked about two different types of lenses. You have two lenses. One of them is called the objective and the other one is called the ocular. The ocular is coming from oculus, which is the eye. This is the one that you put your eye on, which is the one on top, that you have two of them. And this is, um, uh, this is the one that's going you, giving you something called the virtual image, which is a really, really magnified uh, image at the end. Um, the objective one, it magnify to some extent, um, and, um, um, uh, and give you the real image. So objective give you the real image, ocular will give you the virtual image. So if we go back to this slide again, this is objective and this is ocular. This is the real image and this is the virtual image. Okay, so far? So it goes from here, if you take it from the bottom, this is a light source. Um, and it will go to through different parts. Uh, uh, the housing filter, followed by the iris or diaphragm, followed by the condenser. To condense the light, it will go through the object. Then you have the objective lens that will magnify. Ocular lens will magnify more. Objective lens, real image. Ocular lens is the virtual image. Since we talked about two different types of lenses, each one is doing magnification. So the total magnification is when you multiply the objective power to the ocular power. 
So let's say you're using an objective lens, uh, the one that you rotate around. So you can choose 100, 40, 10, whatever it is. So let's say you're using the 100 and the ocular power is 10. So the total magnification will be objective multiplied by ocular, which is in this case will be 1000. Is that clear? You multiply objective by the ocular, giving you the total magnification. So in this example, it's thousands. These are the two again, objective and ocular, objective multiplied by the ocular that give you the total magnification. This is the first concept, which is magnification. The, the, the second concept that we talked about is the resolution. The resolution is how clear the picture is. Is that clear enough to see the details or not? So this is called the resolution. And as, as a definition, the resolution is the capacity to distinguish at least two separate points that are close to each other. Okay? So if I give you two small dots, if you tell me these are two dots and you can see them, the resolution is good. If you tell me uh, I can see one, it means it's close enough to each other and the resolution is not good enough that you see it as two. Okay, so there has to be a minimal, a minimal distance between those two points. Okay, um, depending on what? Depending on the wavelength of the light that's forming the image and the characteristics of the objects. So we have two elements here that give you the resolution. The wavelength and the characteristics of the objects. So wavelength, normally the wavelength will go somewhere from 400 to 750. And the numerical aperture, which is of the lens, meaning um, how close the points to each other. It can be from 0.1 to 1.25. Every one, every lens is different. So the bottom line is, this is the most important one, what determine the resolution? Or what is the good resolution? How to get a good resolution? Short wavelength and large numerical aperture. Aperture. Clear? We're talking about two, two things here, right? How to get the resolution? I have two things. Number one, the wavelength. Number two, the numerical aperture. Meaning, how close or how far from each other. Is that clear? So how to get the best of all, short wavelength and large numerical aperture, okay? Um, sometimes, you, you can see that in a, in a, if, you, if, you, if you ever did do a lab, sometimes you put a, a, a drop of oil. Like you get that slide, the object is in the middle and you put a drop of oil. Why are you putting a drop of oil? This improves the resolution. So if you put that drop of oil, it can be up to 0.2 micrometers. Um, and I will show you what's the importance of that oil. It just changed the refraction. I will show you. But uh, magnification, the lowest that you can get is 40, which is like um, uh, 4 by 10. 4 by 10, this is like very small. But you can go up to 2,000. We're talking about the optical one, okay? Did you see the, uh, the microscopes before? There is an opt a optical or light microscope and there is an elect electronic microscope, right? I'm talking about the optical one now. The optical can range from, which is the one that I talked about the different parts of it. Are we following so far? So you can get it from 40 and 40 you're talking about total magnification, which is like four by 10, okay? Up to 2000. This is the highest that you can get. If you want it more than that, not the light microscopy. It's not going to help you much. So here is the purpose of oil. Why sometimes we put a drop of oil? Because if you're looking at something here and the light rays are refracted like this, if you leave it alone, it will go like this. So, and this is your lens. It will not go to the lens, you will not see it. So the details will not be good enough. But if you use this drop, a drop of oil, it will make the refraction better. It will improve the refraction and you can see better. Sometimes they use it, sometimes they don't use it. So this is magnification and resolution. You're magnifying and you have a good resolution at the same time. 
So can you tell me uh, which one is the best resolution concerning the wavelength only? Short. Short. And how about the numerical aperture? Large. Large. Okay. Yes. Still talking about the optical microscope, you can use three different variations. You can use three different things. You can use three different fields. The bright field is number one, and this is most of the time this is what we're, we're using. Uh, in this case, the specimen will be darker than the surrounding field. Okay, and why do you use what do you use that for? Live preserved stained specimen. This is something that's important to remember. Wha when are you using the bright field in which it will be darker? Live preserved stained. Live preserved stained. Bright field. This is one. Second one is the dark field. Uh, in this one, the surrounding will not be light, like the first one, it's dark field. So we were talking about the field, right? The field surrounding the specimen. Is it bright? Is it dark? In dark, see how this is black around the specimen? So the surrounding is basically black. And why? You, when do you use this? This is live, unstained. This is not stained. So if it's stained, which one you use? The bright one. Um, phase contrast, this is another one that uh, transform the subtle changes in the light waves going through the specimen into li different light uh, density. And this is most important no thing to know about phase contrast is intracellular structures. Inter like you're looking at Golgi apparatus, you're looking at the mitochondria, you use the phase contrast. Uh, next microscope is fluorescence microscope. It's basically the same. They modified a little bit, and instead of using the regular light source, they used ultraviolet radiation with a filter. Okay, this is basically the difference. Instead of using a light source, you're using an ultra ultraviolet radiation as a source, and use a filter too. Uh, and you have to use a, a certain dyes. Uh, in order to see. And this is, use is important here. You die, it's, you use it, you use it for diagnosing infection. If you have a specimen, a hepatitis for example, or any type of infection, you get that infection, um, and you get that swab from that infection, you put it on a slide, fluorescence microscope will, will, will help you with the ultraviolet radiation. Um, uh, scanning, confocal microscope, this is another one. And basically, this is one that is scanning. Do you know how the CT looks like? Like give you different it's scans. CT scan, isn't it? It's called the CT scan. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gives you different slices like this. This is doing the, th the same thing. It's just scan around. So it gives you different depth. Okay, like, like take a scan after a scan after a scan after a scan. And it compare them together to get the depth. And this is the significance of them. The more advanced microscope is electron microscope. So remember the first one, we use light source, right? The second one, we use ultraviolet. This one, you're using electrons. And electrons have uh, a short wavelengths and it is very accelerated. It's, it's 100,000 times shorter. Do you remember that we said that the shorter the wavelengths, the better the resolution? So this is extremely short, extremely short. So you can see very small object, the tiniest thing that you can see it with the light microscope. And this, the minimal for that is 5,000 times. What was the minimal for the light microscope? 40. This is the minimum is 5,000 and it can go up to a million, okay? So you're using electrons. So this is comparing the two, minimal and maximal. You're using light rays in the optical or light microscope versus electron uh, beams. 
uh, you're using glass objective lens um, as a focusing lens, but the lens in the electron is electromagnetic one, uh, and so on. It, it, it's compared, this is you're using a glass, the light you're using a glass as a slide, this is you're using a copper mesh to cover it. Uh, it, it light microscope is more used for the uh, um, alive uh, specimen, usually not for the electrons, you're losing about, you, you're looking at something that's fixed. Uh, but for the electron, it has to be stained. Remember uh, the light? It ha does it have to be stained with the light? It does not have to be stained. You can, it can be stained or not stained, right? Remember the different fields? So, but for the light, for the electron, it has to be stained. You have stained meaning you're adding a dye. Okay. Uh, electron microscope. We have two types of them: TEM and SEM. T E M and S E M. TEM is a transition uh, transmission electron microscope, and this will basically will give you parts that's denser and part that's lighter. Uh, uh, depending on the electrons passing through it. So the darker area is the thicker one and the lighter area is the less dense one. L like this picture right there. Give you two different components. One is thick and one is thin, which is representing the lighter and the denser. The other type is called electro, um, uh, uh, scanning electron microscope. When you see scanning, it's scanning so it's give it scan around give you, give you different sections, uh, and and this will give you three dimensional view, three dimensional view. It goes back and forth like this. It goes around back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, scanning around the specimen until it end up giving you 3D, and this is the clue for this one. 3D. Uh, if you're uh, optical lens, uh, optical microscope again, if you are preparing a specimen to look at, what are the type of mounts? I can use wet mount, you put a drop on it, uh, and you can use fixed mount. Fixed mount is the one, um, I think we used it in AP, this slide that come in a box, it's fixed, it's not wet, it's dry, and you look at it, it's fixed, every, like every one of us look at it, and, and that's it. This is a fixed one. But there is another one that's wet. The wet one is the one that uh, show you the characteristics of live cells. Like if you look at the wet mount, you can see not only the size, but you can see motility. Like you look at it and you see something moving in the field, right? Can give you the shape, how the shape is changing. It's live. The fixed is, is different. Uh, it just show you fixed. So it show you like, um, cell or the cell parts you can see it, but it's not moving it's not changing nothing did you get the uh, the difference between wet and uh, fixed what kind of dye are you using I can use a basic dye or acidic dye basic dye it help you for positive staining uh, the surface of the microbes is negatively charged and it will attract the dye. So if you know that this microbe uh, is negatively charged, it will attract the basic dye, which is cation, positively charged. The other one is the acidic dye. In, in this case, the, 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 the microbes are negatively charged. It is going to repel the dye, so it's not going to take it the acidic dye. So one of them will take it and one of them does not take it. Um, uh, stains can be simple, differential or structural stains. Three different types. Simple stain, you're using one dye only. Simple. One. And this can show you the shape, size and arrangement. Differential one, you use differential stains, you're using more than one. You're using a primary one and a counter stain. And that's why you call it differential. It's more than one. Uh, and this one doesn't, uh, like the simple one, show you just the shape, size, arrangement. This one can show you more details and can distinguish the different parts. And you can use something like gram stain, uh, acid fast stain, endospore stain. 
So these are different stains. One of them is primary and the other one is counter. Uh, structural stain uh, is the one that reveal the structure, the cell parts. Can show you the different cell parts. Uh, you can sh you can see the membrane, you can see the capsule, you can see the flagella, and so on. So I show you the different structures. This is just an example of the simple one. This is an example of uh, the negative one, which is simple. This one is differential. You see how different parts are showing? Uh, the purple one is positive and the red one is negative. I want you to remember this for gram stain. For differential, you're using the primary stain, which is gram. Some of them will take it, some of them will not take it. So the purple one is positive, the red ones are negative, okay? So if you're looking under the microscope, you see positive. You call this gram-positive organism. If you see thread, you say this is a gram-negative. It doesn't take it. Right now, it's, it's, uh, you, you don't see the significance, but when we go to the actual organisms, you will see the difference. You will see different types of gram-positive and different types of gram-negative. But generally speaking, for now, if it is positive, it takes the purple color. If it is negative, it takes the red color. Um, here is an example of uh, TB, which is acid fast. Uh, it's, if it is red, it's, it, it is acid fast. If it is blue, it's non-acid fast. So obviously the TB uh, will be the red ones because it is acid fast. Here is staining the spores. You see the rods, the red rods here. So this is staining uh, the rods. Structural stains, it will show you the different parts. Look at this. It will show you the different parts inside the inside the cell. It can show you the capsule. It can show you um, all the details of the structures of the cells. This is the one that's f uh, staining structural one, showing you the flagella. See these extensions? Finger-like projections. This is a fluorescence stain. You see the, the green here, which is uh, the chromosome, the bacterial chromosome, and you see the cell membrane that's red. And that's it for the microscope. 